All right, y'all. So in this next video, we about to check out, man, it's some unexplained, impossible ancient relics found in China. All right, so we're gonna check them out. So if you knew, you know what to do. You already know. Hit that subscribe button, run them likes up, and let's see what they found. While perusing the many perplexing sites we are yet to cover on our channel, we stumbled across something which could quite possibly be a massive clue. Evidence left as to the method of construction of many ancient sites found all over Earth. Our channel has, for a long time, put forward the hypothesis that a highly advanced worldwide civilization once flourished here on our planet. Right. We believe that many of the ancient sites which display unexplained architecture were left by this lost people, placed far within our distant past. And once one begins to investigate these ruins with this possibility in mind, you start to notice some compelling things regarding these amazing sites. For example, the metal clamps we have previously covered, often created using impressive mixes of alloys and somehow poured molten could now be seen as earlier architectural examples less than the mortarless, mysteriously notched stonework, also found in similar areas all over the world, with the more precise and thus more impressive stonework, seen as a later, more sophisticated method of construction. What's more, although virtually all ancient sites have been dated to the most convenient suspects within known taught history, there also exists the numerous caves and temples hewn from the solid bedrocks, carved with such accuracy and vision, they elude recreation even by our modern-day technology. And while looking at an amazing rock-cut cave within the site of Mamalapuram, India, a site we are now convinced was left by this same civilization, a curious piece of evidence seemingly presented itself. Upon the roughly finished roof of wow. this ancient cave, is evidence left by the same technology used to not only cut the astonishingly huge Longyu Caves, but also the abandoned Langshan Quarry, both in China. This discovery, we believe, is only just the beginning of a realization that these telltale signatures are present at many other unexplained sites around the world. We have long stipulated that many of the ancient ruins claimed by our more modern-day ancestors are most likely not their actual creations. If the structure does date to this more recent age, they are usually found to be sitting upon the telltale remnants of a highly precise ancient foundation originally left by this elusive group. Who were these amazing people? When did they flourish here on Earth? What happened to them? Why did they never record how they created such wonders? I was about to say, where is their technology? There's a lot of this stuff you can tell. Ain't no way they did this by hand, so they had something advanced. Where is it at? Although it is easy for skeptics to argue that the caves and architecture were merely created through excruciating hard labor, any practical demonstration of this has eluded us for many centuries. Furthermore, many of the extensive cave excavations found all over the world presumably dating back to this bygone age, are all absent any waste, as if the machine tasked with creating these underground labyrinths turned stone to dust. And although the technology and or possible machinery tasked with the job has evaded modern archaeology to this point, it is clearly another piece of evidence which takes us one step closer to unraveling the true history of our planet. Phoenix Hill, Xianbi Qun, China. China. In 1994, an extremely mysterious discovery would be made. Considered by the Chinese as the ninth ancient wonder of the world. A series of 24 ancient, artificial caves were discovered. Specialists have been quietly astounded by them. And the more we learn, the more of a spectacular and mysterious achievement they are seen to be. The first thing that struck explorers were their size. Each cave has a minimum floor space of 1,000 square feet, an unimaginable undertaking at the time they were thought to have been constructed. Officially dated prior to the dynasties of China, which began 3,000 years ago, meaning they are very, very old. The walls of the caves are scarred with strange uniform tool marks. 
The weird thing about the markings, is that they are all set on a 60 degree angle, every single chisel mark within the cave system without exception, is on an exact 60 degree cutting angle. This has led many to suspect that the caves must have somehow been dug using advanced machinery. However, because this feature is unique within our current knowledge of ancient structures, the angle of cutting could indeed have been made by hand, with the purpose of decoration, but this would have made the job of cutting them out even more laborious. Additionally, once the caves had been assessed and explored, a remarkable thing was realized, although the caves were the result of excavating thousands and thousands of tons of rock, this rock seems to have vanished from existence. There is no trace of a spoil pile anywhere to be seen, it is as if the caves have always been there. No traces of their construction has ever been found anywhere, no cave writings, drawings, tools, or human remains, and nothing within historical records. The cave's construction simply doesn't make sense, and any evidence for their construction doesn't exist. Add to this the fact that the cave systems predate Chinese civilization by some time, and show evidence of being cut out by machine. And the Long Yu Caves undoubtedly become a curiosity to scientific explanation, and historical understanding, to say the least. These remarkable caves, are a very strong and solid piece of evidence to suggest that advanced cultures have already been and gone on this planet, or that visitors of extraterrestrial origin, visited the planet, prior to human development. As far as I am aware, these are the only two possible scenarios for the builders of such a construction. The cave's systems are well over 3,000 years old and still intact, whoever was capable of constructing them, was also capable of disposing of the huge mountains of rock that would have been excavated, without leaving any evidence of how they did this, or indeed built the caves anywhere. The caves are known as one of the largest underground complexes ever discovered. The fact that more is not heard about this wonderful place, is testament to their extraordinary existence, meaning no one within the scientific community can, or want to try to explain them. Also, which I found highly interesting, when they were discovered they were completely filled with water, whether this was one sort water, has not been disclosed, but I have personal suspicions as to how this water came to rest within these underground caverns. No fish were found within the caves, which many found odd. However, if you suspected no that the waters be residual leftovers from a great flood, water from the great seas of earth, then over time, salt levels would plummet and fish accustomed to sea water would have died. Who do you think built the long new caves? The cave's existence hint towards a hidden history here on our planet, a history that we must unravel if we are ever to fully understand ourselves and our home. So, they're saying, one, this could be a result of hard labor. These caves were were dug out, formed, all that type of stuff with hard labor. Now, if you look at these caves and you look at some of the designs and different things and some of the artwork that's around these caves, it just doesn't give me hard labor. I'm not saying that it isn't. I'm just saying I don't get that from it when I look at it, man. That is just, that is just amazing work. Attention to detail at its finest with some of that artwork, man. A lot of that artwork. So hard labor, I can understand hard labor, digging out the cave, getting it ready. You know what I'm saying? And maybe that's the way it went. They dug the cave out. They opened it up. They made sure everything was cleaned out. It was pre prepared so the artists could come in. Maybe that's how it went. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's, it's, we have, and all we have to go on is speculation and theory right now, period. You know what I'm saying? But, ah, man, it's just hard to believe. I guess maybe it's because we live in more so of a, I hate to say, lazy type of society to where we just can't picture anybody doing that because we view how we view our society as being there's not too many people that go out and get it and hustle and create and would do that type of work. So we just can't wrap our minds around it, maybe. Or maybe back then. It was possible without technology, just their hands, time, attention, detail, a great leader, somebody to guide them. Maybe it got done. In 1938, an expedition was conducted, led by Dr. Kai Pute, an archaeologist with the Chinese Academy of Sciences in Beijing, into the Bayan Karola Mountains of China, looking for evidence of ancient civilizations. 
He was trying to find shelter in the Kunlung Ket mountain chain, when a team member entered a cave and found strange inscriptions on the walls. At the back of the cave they found several tombs, aligned in a row, containing strange looking skeletons, each measuring 1 meter 20 centimeters in length and having an abnormally large skull. Buried with the skeletons over 700 stone discs were discovered. Not knowing what they were, the team collected the stone discs up and took them back for study. The discs are around one foot in diameter, with two spiral grooves moving out from a center hole. They ended up in storage for over 20 years, before Tsu Mumwi found out about the discs, and was given the permission to study them further. This is when something amazing is discovered to be contained on the stone discs, an amazing story which would cost Tsu his reputation, and ultimately his life. The Chinese Academy of Sciences tried to ban the publication of these findings, but eventually the story of the Dropper tribe and their stone discs was released. What he discovered were tiny hieroglyphs etched into the grooves upon the discs, the hieroglyphs tell an amazing story. By 1962, Tsum had successfully deciphered the writings, stating that they told the story of a spaceship crashing on the mountains some 12,000 years ago, the ship contained the Dropper people, who were unable to fix the craft. Stranded on Earth with no hope of returning home, this story tells of their short lives here, they explain how most are killed by the local human population, in the end the last remaining members die in the cave. Russian researchers requested the discs for study, and allegedly several were shipped to Moscow. Once there, it is said that they were scraped for loose particles and put through a chemical analysis which revealed that they contained large amounts of cobalt and other metallic substances. As recorded in the Soviet magazine Sputnik, Dr. Vyacheslav Seyazev describes an experiment where the discs were supposedly placed on a special turntable, whereby they were shown to vibrate or hum in an unusual rhythm, as though an electric charge is passing through them. However, fast forward to present day and no evidence survives of the discs, nor Tsum himself, nor the ridicule he received which cost him his life. It appears as though the discs have been skillfully transformed into an apparent hoax. Bayan Karola remains one of China's most remote regions, its mountains reach as high as 5,000 meters, a new expedition is being prepared to this remote place, largely funded by Chinese media companies, I will keep you posted on what they discover. Ancient Uparts are undoubtedly one of the most interesting subjects in regard to lost antiquities. Many of these artifacts, due to the locations in which they are found within, or the immense age displayed within the erosion seen upon the object, makes them one of the most controversial areas of study. How can one answer the question of how an iron pot is found within a solid lump of coal within a seam over 300 million years in age? Or how the clear imprint of a chariot wheel is found fossilized deep within a mine in Russia? These artifacts, found at hundreds of feet deep in sediment, or displaying a wooden handle petrified into coal, display an undeniably immense age, and as such, are solid pieces of evidence to support our posit of there having been a series of now lost civilizations stretching far into the past. Nature is infamous in being cyclical. Why then would we not be permitted by mainstream academia to presume this be the case for the climates of the Earth as well. Regardless of this digression, however, the subject of tonight's video is an incredible artifact which we believe to be that of an ancient upart. However, due to its incredible characteristic, is being masqueraded as that of a much later creation by a far more recent ancestor. Known as the Sword of Gujan, this intriguing artifact has somehow resisted the effects of time and although it is enormously old, is seemingly as sharp and as shiny today as the day it was made. Definitely don't look old. <laughs> and it looked like a, like a designer sword. Like, like a designer created that, like somebody from Louis or Gucci or something like that. That's why I was looking at the print on it. This remarkable characteristic, although unexplained, is not the only interesting thing about the sword. It also features an incredibly old form of writing. Eight characters are written in an ancient script, now known as bird worm seal script, literally birds and worms characters. Owing to the intricate decorations of the defining strokes, it is very old and is attested to be a variant of seal script. In 1965, while an archaeological survey was being performed along the second main aqueduct of the Zhang River Reservoir in Jingzhou, Ube, 
fact, a series of ancient tombs were discovered. A dig started in the middle of October 1965, ending in January 1966, eventually revealing more than 50 ancient tombs. More than 2,000 artifacts were recovered from the sites, including the sword, having been found inside a casket together with a human skeleton. The casket was discovered in the December of 1965 at the Wangshan site number 1, 7 kilometers from the ruins of Ying, currently called Jinishang, once the ancient capital of Chu. The sword was found sheathed in a wooden scabbard, finished in black lacquer. The scabbard had an almost airtight fit with the sword body. Unsheathing the sword revealed an untarnished blade, despite the tomb being soaked in underground water for over 2,000 years. How did this sword retain its incredible condition? Why does it seem as if it is resistant to aging? What sort of metallurgy did the swordsmith once use to create such an amazing object? That's my question. <laughs> What type of lost-like sword-creating technology did they have? How did they get something like that? The only way I could think of something being that preserved is maybe the environment it was it was stored in, where they found it at. You know what I mean? A lot of times we find different things in the cold, and it's well-preserved. You know what I mean? Other than that, they had some type of technology to create this sword, man, that we need to figure out. It is clearly an ancient upart, and one we postulate has an origin now hidden within the bowels of history. That it sucks. is a remarkable thing, and as such, is highly compelling. Man. In our previous video, we presented a hypothesis, a theory believed by many, one of a now lost or possibly hidden race of ancient giants. Surprisingly, however, Recently, although China is seen as an infamously secretive country, with many tombs and ancient pyramids of gargantuan proportions rarely aerial photographed, let alone explored, it seems that they have, at last, stolen the archaeological world stage with the announcement of a discovery which we may relish, but those whom these remains rest just beyond the clutches of, we would presume rather get a hold of themselves to study and then store away in hidden archives, far from public view, an ongoing effort we have personally read of, dating back to the early 1900s. An ancient graveyard, complete with over 500 giant human remains, has not only been accidentally discovered, but publicly exhumed and most crucial of all, photographed for all the world to see within China. Could this be a retaliatory move with other motives at play? If our previously mentioned theory is true, it would enable man to explain the inexplicably, seemingly impossible size of many of the world's megaliths. And in Now we first need to know what they classified giant. How, how tall did they? you have to be to be classified as a giant back then? That's what we need to know, find out. I think I saw in that article it was like 5'9" was considered extremely tall for them like that. So imagine what they would think about us. You know what I mean? Shaq is what, seven something? Yao Ming is seven foot something? You know, we have some giants walking around. You know what I mean? So I want to know what height did they classify that as? Indeed, still standing megalithic structures of the world. How a pyramidal, treasury, and many other ancient architectures, lintels, and top stones often weighing many hundreds of tons, were not only transported from quarries many hundreds of miles, but placed aloft many meters with seeming ease. Furthermore, we have in the past not only postulated and have also presented reams of witness testimony and photographic cooperation, still to be found in newspaper archives across the Western world, describing these finds, but also the Smithsonian's efficiency in not only dealing with the matter, but disappearance of any further reporting, thus expiration. This also supporting the reason for lost pieces of the puzzle, which is inhibiting us from unlocking the secrets to these sites' construction. Perhaps we may never know the true motivations for such a controversial exposure in China. But nonetheless, the resulting fallout of proof presented for our community is a step closer to the truth. 
The untangling of a tired and tangled web of lies in which many have weaved. <laughs> For at the bottom That's of true. Pandora's box, there is always hope. That's true. I feel like that's where we spend majority of our time trying to unweave the lies and the deceit and and trying to figure things out for ourselves, man. That's it's I hate that we have to do it that way. As the lines. the mosaic lines very little is known or has been photographed of them as they are located in secretive china interesting <laughs> secretive china That's the thing it could be artwork or it could be them realizing that there's potentially something out there in outer space and them trying to communicate through the artwork i guess that's something that to just be lost in history as well And the bad thing about that is it could be completely nothing. <laughs> and we're racking our brains trying to figure it out. But what keeps you trying to figure it out is, is the possibility that it could be something, an answer to something that we want answers to. So stuff like that, man, you just have to take the good with the bad and just keep trying, working at it, plugging at it, trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? Stuff When that stuff like that pops up, you're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> something else? But yet you're so intrigued that you don't mind it a bit, to say the least. <laughs> History is interesting, though, man. Listen, y'all get at me in the comment section and let me know what you thought of this video. And stick around and stay tuned. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.